My first exposure to John Boyce wasn't through YouTube. In 2013, Boyce began writing a series of articles on SB Nation titled Breaking Madden, in which he put the titular football video game through its torturous paces by inventing wild and hilarious scenarios, pushing the game's player rating system past its limits and creating wonderful characters such as the immortal Clarence Beef Tank. These articles melded Boyce's great knack for storytelling with some of the funniest animated GIFs I have ever seen, and towards the end of Breaking Madden's tenure, some excellent and occasionally weirdly stirring short video previews. It shouldn't be any surprise then that Boyce seems to have found his voice most decisively in the YouTube medium. Starting with his sports documentary series, Pretty Good, Boyce has, to my mind, established a reputation as one of the most compulsively watchable video creators of our time. His work transcends the apparent limits of the sports journalism genre, in part because of the quality of his work, and also because he frequently, deliberately pushes far outside of that genre. Most notably in his speculative fiction series, 17776, I've never been sure how to pronounce that, and its sequel series, the name of which I would actually feel bad saying because it's deployed so perfectly in the series itself. Those works, blending YouTube and the written word and various contortions of web markup language, took a previous genre-defying exploration, the Tim Tebow CFL Chronicles, which like many of Boyce's projects is a dad joke that keeps going until it unravels into a genuinely compelling saga and blew it up to massive proportions with a generations spanning exploration of what it means to be human and the power of sports to create a community and a space for drama that, in its greatest moments, can remove us from the drudgery and frequent horror of day-to-day -day living. How does he do it? How did Boyce turn a job writing about sports for SB Nation into such a singular, transcendent identity? I'm not saying that sports writing is somehow lesser than other forms, by the way, but even at its greatest, your 30 for 30s, your The Last Dances, and so on, it rarely breaks out of its typical audience segment. They are sports stories for sports fans, which generally assume you have some fundamental attachment to the sports themselves that will get you watching in the first place. Boys, on the other hand, creates work that frequently generates the reaction, I don't care about, insert sport here, but this is amazing. I'd posit that Boyce's unique style as a video creator both has a lot to do with this and reveals something about the underlying talent and approach Boyce brings to the table that resonates powerfully to anyone who stumbles across his work. I should say now, before we go further, that I'm using John Boyce as a bit of a shorthand because by this point in his career, uh, I think most of his work is to some degree or another a cumulative effort. His latest series on Secret Base, chronicling the history of the Atlanta Falcons, names more than a half dozen collaborators and folks like Alex Rubenstein and Joe Ali share significant time with him in the voiceover spotlight. Let's start by naming a few qualities of a John Boyce video that are rare to find in YouTube and see if we can't track down a pattern. First, the camera work. Camera is a bit of a misnomer here. Maybe the most immediately unique element of Boyce's video work is his reliance on Google Earth, a 3D renderer of Google's map data. Boyce imports an incredible amount of custom assets from infographics to headshots to other animations and dynamic overlays and then he uses Google Earth's panning, rotating, and zooming tools to pull a viewer across a literal landscape of story. There are a few ramifications to this approach. The first is that it folds in all of Google Earth's animation and 3D rendering quirks into the final product. Weird clipping, buildings that don't look quite right at a close zoom, and some static graphics that look increasingly odd or skewed as the camera pans along them. This adds to the unique quality of the work. It would be hard to imagine faking this style or finding it done in quite the same way in hands other than Boise's, specifically because the tools he's using weren't really built for this sort of presentation. Perhaps more importantly though, the fact that Boyce drops all his graphics onto a continuous space means that there is tremendous opportunity for continuous camera work. Unlike many video essays and YouTube works that try to tell stories outside of a selfie stick vlogger approach, Boyce doesn't need to cut from one asset to another to bring you to the next point in the adventure. Instead, the camera can just go there 
as literally as if he were leading you on a museum tour. And it's a luxurious tour at that. Dramatic zooms and slow pans are littered across Boyce's videos, and notably, he tends to let his voiceover drop in these moments, building drama through the camera's movement and the underlying musical selection. There's a languid, inviting feeling generated by this approach. You're a passenger on a train chugging through exotic lands. Some things go by quickly, but many others hang on the horizon long enough for you to truly drink in the details. I mentioned the music, so let's go there next. YouTube is a land perpetually backgrounded by lo-fi, short-looping stock music. You're hearing it behind me right now, for one. Even folks who have the wherewithal to commission or create their own music tend to go either for deliberately slow orchestral, synthetic or otherwise, sounds, or for mid-tempo beats that carry a viewer through a video without ever being exactly notable or worth foregrounding. There are, of course, exceptions to this, but it's also a rule that makes sense. Background music is for the background, to give a bit of extra momentum and tone to the voiceovers and visuals. Voice, by contrast, frequently opts for expressive, jazzy numbers that he allows to overtake him as often as not, whether it's for a camera pan as I described before, or to let a moment sink in. When the music shifts in tone, it often does so abruptly and jarringly, having more in common with a Martin Scorsese harsh cut than your average polished YouTube essay. The music works less as a background player than as a co-host. It's moving the action forward as much as Boyce's voice. Oh, and that voice. That Boyce got his start in writing might lead you to think his vocal approach is less deliberate and more amateur, and I'm sure there's something to that. But regardless of how careful the affectations are, Boyce's voice, God, that's fun to say, matches his style perfectly. He has a friendly, smooth approach to his narration that only boils up into enthusiasm or softens into solemnity when it's truly required to match the moment of the story. He's less a wannabe Jim Nance or Bob Costas, thunderous televised narrators of sports and sports-adjacent stories, and more your friend chatting with you in a quiet bar about this crazy story he read, or remembers from his childhood, or heard his dad telling his friends the other day. It's intimate and inviting, the stylings of a storyteller who wants to tell you his story, one-on-one, -on -one, sharing this special or crazy or hilarious or poignant moment, rather than orating to a massive arena of frothing fans. I've said story a lot, and I think that's what ties all of this together into such a potent and compelling approach. As uniquely of the internet as his video style is, it's also a style built and focused entirely around telling good stories. There's a reason that first video series he did was called Pretty Good. He's starting with the story, letting its beats and rhythms dictate the specifics of his editing. The camera work I described above moves across landscapes built on the highs and lows of a particular moment or narrative, so that the pace of a zoom or the slow cresting of a horizon matches not just the rest of the audiovisual cues, but the emotional center of the story in that particular moment. Somehow, with a medium as far removed from it as imaginable, Boyce recreates that sensation of hearing a good story told by a relaxed friend at a bar or during the dying embers of a house party, pulling you in and catching your breath and releasing you with the laughter or a shocked sigh or a sad shake of your head. He finds that moment when the relaxed friend disappears altogether, and your mind's engrossment in the storytelling is all that's left. He's letting the story do the talking. He's a mediator, not a showman. And for all its evident craft, his work is still unassuming. It lets you see the cracks in the facade, only to draw you even deeper into the magic show. That, above all, is what I cherish in Boyce's work. Whatever he's writing or talking about, whatever the medium he's chosen, I feel confident coming into one of his pieces that John Boyce knows he's got a good story to tell, and that through a lot of magic and talent and effort, he's going to let that story tell itself. Every single time, I can't wait to hear it.